All right, Russ, I, I need to ask you a question um, today. In light of today's topic, we talk about how safe is your cash value, but it really made me think last night, um, how safe is my job? Like, like <laughs> what? Like I, my, did, my seven-year-old, I, my seven-year-old came to me and said, Hey dad, um, when you die, can I take over the podcast? <laughs> Just straight innocent. Like, I, I want to make sure we keep this podcast going. So when you die, I need to make sure it's in good hands. She was, she's already looking ahead. <laughs> That's right. She doesn't That's know right. something I don't know. Right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> but, but at the same time, this is a, another funny thing. Last night we were sitting there talking at dinner. My girls were just like super interested in Bitcoin all of a sudden. It's like yeah. they, dad, what is this? What is this Bitcoin? Of course, you know me, I'm not super detailed. So I've struggled to explain it to a seven year old, an eight year old, 14 and 16 year old. Uh, but by the end of it, I thought, man, I, I must have gotten something across because you've got the picture up on our screen here. If you're, if you're just listening to this, you can't see it. Go check it out on YouTube or in our community. But uh, my little Adler, my seven year old again, writes, you want to save up your money and you want to save up your Bitcoin in her beautiful seven year old handwriting. <laughs> I don't know. Just, it's just classic. Uh, and, and money is M U N E. Yeah. I love <laughs> of course that. it is. Of course it is. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah, well, I mean, our, our girls are, are constantly, I feel like scheming, coming up with ideas. My daughter, Betsy, who's 12 has been starting to talk to me about wanting a convertible. Uh-oh. She's 12. Like, why are we talking <laughs> about cars? And she's like, she's hitting me up. You think I can get a convertible? How much does that cost? And we're, you know, like, how would I pay for that? And she's just like asking all these questions. Well, yesterday where we get in the car and she says, dad, if I don't get a convertible, but I just get a regular car, do you think I could get a cat to stay in my room? <laughs> so she's now, she's down like completely mastered the art of downselling the upsell, right? Like the real thing that she wants is a cat that can stay in her room. That's been yes. an ask for a while, but she's like, okay, I'm going to plant this. I'm going to hold this back. Yes. And I'm going to start upselling this other thing over here that I don't really care about. Right. I'm four years away from needing a car. So what if I, you know, I, hey, I'm going to save you money, dad. Like we're going to say, I don't even know how much money, but it's got to be a savings, right? Because I mean, who wouldn't pay extra to have, you know, a, 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 pl a plastic thing over their head or yeah, a, a hard top or whatever, something that moves. And if I, if I, if I don't do that and I save you all this money, surely I can get a cat Murray, right? Oh, totally brilliant. Now, I, I don't know what any of these things have to do with, the safety of your cash value, except Nothing. for the potential that my daughter may be trying to cash in on it. Um, <laughs> exactly. She, your, your family's <laughs> going to learn how safe is your death benefit because she's <laughs> trying to figure out she can run the podcast. And her personality is great enough that I I, I may have to take a, seat back, a step back here. She's the idea person. She's the one who can sell rocks and seashells to people in the neighborhood. <laughs> to the I, neighbors. I don't have that ability. But if you have interest in learning, not only were what does the market have to do with how our insurance cash values are um, impacted or not impacted? What are all the things that can impact those things? This episode will be good for you. Joey, let's pull a seat up to the table and belly up. up. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them, and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. If this is your first time in with us, welcome. Grateful to have you in the room. I'm Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy, mostly because lack of follow through guy didn't sound as cool to me. Well, enough about me for a moment. Let me get to 
my co-host, the Italian Stallion, the man who's got the license plate cover to prove it, Mr. Joe Mire. Stallion, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Russ. And uh, man, I'm excited that we get to sit around this round table and talk about incredible topics like this. Yeah. Well, how safe is my cash value is the topic today, Joey? Can I just sum it up for us real quick? I'd say, I'd say safe to quite safe. Safe. Should we even consider even asking the coaches about this? Because I think you just summed it up so good. Podcast over. Move on to the next topic. I don't know. Let's ask the inner circle. Guys, do, should we keep going or is that good enough? Are you good? It's a mic right. drop we, moment. We got, no, they say keep going. This is, let's go. Yeah, I mean, this is just a quickie, man. It's just like the uh, haircut um, JD got earlier. Wow. But speaking of that, speaking of my man, the man I like to refer to as Mr. Incredible and his superpower is speed to financial freedom. And the real speed of that is that it's contagious. My man, JD Hill, say hello to your fans, JD. Hello. I Listen, I think what happened is I gave that contagious speed to my barber. Mm. And she went way too fast and uh, she got a little clipper happy. Um, and so it makes my face look long. Um, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm receding. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm feeling better, uh, actually before you actually made a comment about it. So, uh, well, Hey, look, we just thought it was a racing strike, man. We know that, that you, that you want to go fast, you know, if you ain't first, you're last, you gotta get a racing stripe hey. in the hair. That's all we thought it was. We didn't know that she made an error until you told us shake and bake, shake and bake, shake and bake. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's shake to your left. Let's get to the man I like to refer to as the true financial Sherlock Holmes of our day. No problem too difficult to solve. If I would have only known him known sooner, I'd be so much richer, said everybody. Mr. Downtown Ernie Brown. I see you, Ern. Nice to be seen. Nice to look at JD's haircut. I feel you, man. Everybody has You got... don't feel me. You don't feel me. Look at that. Look at that hair you have. You don't feel me. <laughs> I do feel you. I promise. Everybody everybody's got a good haircut story. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hey, what do they say? Haircuts in real estate, man. Very similar. Just, just, just hang around long enough and it fixes up. Okay. Yeah. Give it enough time. It'll appreciate. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, you, you can cut that thing. I mean, cut that out that, of that's, this whole thing. It, you know, your haircut cash value, they're all safe, right? Earn. Well, JD is young enough. You get old enough, you get a haircut. It gets a little unsafe. I'm not really sure if it's going to come back. <laughs> but at JD's age, yes, I'd say as safe as cash value. Hey, man, yeah. I keep. I feel like I keep getting buzzed on the on the on the back side of my head every every night. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know what you're talking about, man. When I was a kid, my uncle said um, he was balding, kind of like I am on the back. And I was like, "What happened to your hair, Uncle Kenny?" Said. The vent monster gets me. <laughs> and I was like, the vent monster is like, yeah, you look up there in an the air conditioned vent at nighttime in my room, it come out. I was like, I ain't going to sleep in that room. <laughs> I know what he's talking about now, man. It's stinking vent monsters in my house. All right, let's let, let's get on. Let's get on to the retiree of the group. Somebody could probably resonate with the receding hairline. Mr. Catch me if you can. When he's not killing bears with his bare hands or spear diving to catch tuna, he's right here dropping gold nuggets. The one and only Mark Haraguchi. Welcome, Mark. I, I I didn't realize I had a receding hairline. What's up with that, dude? That's, I just said you can resonate with it, right? Like I'm assuming no, in your no, retirement no. crowd, you're, <laughs> no, you're rolling no, with people no. with receding hairlines. Just right, because so every morning, just because every morning I wake up and I see more of my hair that have all quit the game and are giving up on the pillow and just like <laughs> abandoning. <laughs> it. No, 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 not not the same as a receding hairline. These these guys are just quitting on me. Um, but we're here to talk about <laughs> safety. Safe, how safe is my cash value? And our cash value is safer than hair at JD's barber. That's really all you need to say. I, this is why you don't, this is why you don't try new barbers like 24 hours Ever. before you just, anyways. Ever. Ever. This is a never try new barber statement. Like ever. Do you know that I would drive two and a half hours to go see a lady to cut my hair when I was a kid that worked at a place called Cut and Go and they spelled it with a K? Of course they did. Because I was not willing to take a chance. Like you took a chance, man. Look, I, I have you seen my my culture index? I, have. I don't have pa- I don't have patience. I neither does she. It's clearly. 
The fade actually looks pretty good, though. I'm, I'm impressed with the fade, but her her scissor work is Edward scissor hand type work. Like it's not. Hey, good. dude, look, Locking. you're ready to get into the Belle Biv DeVoe um, group right now. Like you got you it. got a high top fade that is like bringing it back to the '90s. Come on, hey, I'm bringing it back like the old school. <laughs> Let's go. I'm All so right. cool. This, this, this is this topic is fun, not nearly as fun as the conversation we're having right now. But let's let's keep doing this because I I do want to know how safe is cash value. And there's a lots of different ways we can go with this, guys. We can talk about is the monetary system that we're dealing with right now is that a safe place? Is it safe in comparison to say FDIC, which is backed up with like less than one percent of the reserves that backing up the money? Is it safe if the currency were to dissipate, right? If we go away from the fiat currency and we see hyperinflation, we can talk about is it guaranteed? What's the alternatives? Is it credit or protected? On and on and on. So I'm going to hand the mic over to you, J.D., and let you tell us why is this so important? Why are we talking about this today? Uh, it, you, you touched on a lot of them. Uh, it's important because um, inflation, number one, uh, depending on which uh, studies you're looking at, if you're eating what the government is feeding you, um, which is diet inflation, or if you're uh, actually looking at the real numbers, um, which is, you know, uh, whole milk inflation. Um, <laughs> did you say diet inflation? Like I did. I, I did. Like, you know, they're, they're watering it down. It's like 7% per the government, you know, but that whole milk inflation is probably closer to like 12 to 15%. You know, it's, it's the real deal. But my point though is, um, is if you have money sitting in the bank, uh, you want to talk about losing purchasing power. Holy cow. Uh, I mean, every single second of every day, you are losing purchasing power every single day. Me on the other hand, because of the money that I have in my cash values, I'm, I'm not losing that purchasing power, um, which, which is why this is relevant today. Um, one, because of the monetary system, like you talked about, two, because of inflation. What about you, Earn? You had something that I thought was pretty valuable here. Well, just in light of what we were talking about last week, right? We talked about, is the market crashing and, and what do I do? Russ, you brought up something that I thought was valuable just the level of fear and uncertainty that we're getting from market research. Consumers are saying at a super high, we're concerned about, about losing value in our investments. We're concerned about inflation. We're concerned about the war, all of these things. And so why is this important today to talk about how safe is cash value is because we want, we want to build our financial house on a strong foundation and, and so to that, when you build such a strong and safe foundation, one of the things that we just threw in there, creditor protection, it just makes you think one, just one more thing. If you build a significant value anywhere, it will try someone sometime at some point will try to take it from you. And so to that, we have to say, okay, well, on that end, if we're playing offense, how can we also play defense? And the good news is cash value, it's, is a beautiful thing. Russ, I remember my dad specifically say to me, Joey, you got to go to college. I don't want you to end up like me. And you know what my dad was saying is in order for things to change, things have to change. You can't end up just like me. Well, I think, I mean, we, we as parents, sometimes we take on the burden thinking about our kids and, and how we want something better for them. And we want to know what will their future look like if I don't take action, if I don't do something different. See, in my house, I'm the role model. You're your kid's role model. And the buck stops with you. It's time to take action. If you're ready to take action, join us at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport and get started on your own journey to financial freedom. All right, let's jump back into this episode. How about you, Mark? I'd say we're... Where I, I want to kind of kick this into is if, if, if you're con concerned about the, the, the safety of your cash value, let's start off with a guarantee. You know, what is actually happening inside with your cash value life, life insurance? So the guarantee that's built within your life insurance policy is governed by IRS code 7702. 
And that's going to set the baseline for internal growth. Depending on your carrier, that rate is going to be now any new products anywhere from 2% as a low up to as high as whatever they want it to be. So you know there's going to be a measure of growth because you also know that the law says that no matter what, at age 121, which is maturity, your cash value has to equal your death benefit. So it's gonna grow. So whether you're actively doing things with it, going out, finding passive income, or you're doing nothing, uh, my cash value today is still there. If the market crumbles tomorrow, my cash value is there. My cash value was there yesterday, it'll be there tomorrow. So if I have something to do with it, now I can actually even get more because my, my, my dollars will grow in one pot and I can use someone else's money to go create even more money to come in and to satisfy life's needs. So that's the guarantee that I like and that's how I feel safe with my cash value. In 2020, when we saw the market pull back from COVID, we had phone calls coming in. Hey, what happened to my cash value? I just saw the market crash. Um, if you guys were watching Netflix yesterday, uh, that dump truck went off a, a cliff and is now on fire at the bottom. <laughs> um, and I, I think I saw some guy who had like one, uh, like billions of dollars, pumped in a bunch, bought a ton of Netflix stock, just sold it today with his group, lost four hundred thirty million dollars of his investment portfolio guess what happened to the cash value in all of our policies? It went up. It went up. It continued marching forward because it has to. So that's the guarantee that I really like. Well, it's I didn't even know that price right? had, had went down. Um, price has been going up, but what happened there? That's a different conversation. That's a different podcast. Yeah. 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 Do not derail us, Russ. <laughs> A different podcast. I just was waiting to see the faces in here to see like I don't I don't think you know that's the well uh, to me that's the the biggest support behind how is my cash value safe right well or how safe is my cash value well it's safe enough that I don't even consider all of these other crazy things that are happening in the world because I know that it goes up every single day as you were just alluding to Mar right. No. which I'm sorry, yeah. I was just going to point to something, which I, I think is, is interesting that you went to the interest rate guarantee, um, but also the, the actual contractual guarantee of the value inside of it as well. Like that, I, I don't think can really be underscored enough or, or talked about enough. Um, Joey, you were in the banking industry, right? With a very prestigious uh, bank. Uh, I say that tongue in cheek. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, what 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 is uh, what does the FDIC insure uh, bank accounts up to? Up to what they have uh, to back it up, right? But in terms of the dollar amount, like what is what are the accounts? What what is that dollar amount? Is it two hundred fifty k? Is that right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. If if you had five million dollars in cash values, how much would the insurance company guarantee if you had five million dollars in cash values? Five million dollars. Five million dollars. Right. Every dollar that you have inside of a life insurance contract is a hundred percent contractually fully guaranteed. And how do how are they able to do that? Insurance companies are some of the most liquid companies on the planet. Right. And in order for them to actually maintain these A plus ratings, which are the only companies that we work with, are private mutual uh, A rated carriers. In order for them to have these A plus ratings, they have to have in in surplus right? What they have out in risk. And so um, that way, if something catastrophic happened, they could actually honor and pay their claims. So the level of liquidity is unbelievable, right? That they could easily be able to pay claims or if somebody you know, needs access to cash, they have access to that cash. And then on top of that, they have insurance on top of that, <laughs> right? Uh, in, inside of every single state has their own state insurance guarantee fund. Um, so there's nothing safer from, from where your money can be other than really inside of a, a cash value life insurance policy. Well, but again, so compare that to the FDIC, like just the dollar amount you just quoted, 250,000 is already a drop in the bucket, right? Compared to what you can get in insurance. But outside of that, what do they actually have to be able to back up their promise? I don't know the exact number today, so I'm hoping somebody knows the answer. Well, I can tell you what it is based on my understanding. There was a law that was passed in the wake of 2008, Too Big to Fail, and that was called the Dodd-Frank Act. 
and they clearly spelled out there will not be another bail out. Instead, they're going to do what's called a bail in. So they're not they, they in the in the law that's written. They said they would not take taxpayer funded bailouts. They would not use taxpayer money. Instead, what they're going to do is they're going to go to everyone who has an account at that bank, and in essence, say, "Congratulations, you're all now show, shareholders of the bank." So we're going to convert the money that they owe you into more fiat <laughs> uh, stock tickets. If for for a, a layman's example, and now you own a piece of the company which has no money. And if you think that's too far fetched, they've already done it in other countries and proven it can be done. Well, Isn't that just so nice of them to do that to give you test rock in, in a company like that that you would? Well, to put put some meat to this bone, right? Because I mean, some of the you know concern we have, we had a discussion inside the community already about this. Was you know like, well, what happens if? our currency goes away, right? Because we have like thrown that out there that, I mean, you look at what has happened where, you know, as you said, JD, the government's reporting seven and a half percent year over year inflation right now, which that's the highest since 1982. But like you said, that's probably diet inflation as to what it really is. <laughs> inflation we, zero. Got, yeah. Coke zero. The, the Fed's balance sheet is now over $9 trillion dollars which in 2008, it was only 850 billion. So it's over 10 times greater. So they have been purchasing assets, which what, what does that mean? That they're, they're literally, our government is buying its own debt back. How are we able to do that? Right? Like it's not, it's printing money to purchase these things. Well, dollar, dollar what, bills, is that, y'all. What, what is that ultimately creating in our, in our environment? It's creating uncertainty. It's creating stock market booms, but also we know behind every boom is the bust. So people ask the question all the time, how does that impact the insurance companies though? If, if we see inflation, we see higher interest rates, how will the insurance companies fare during all of this stuff? Because we love that we have quote unquote safety, but really how do we know it's that safe compared to what? Are, are you asking me a question there, Russ? I, it wasn't rhetorical. It was is it intended for the group. I just didn't want to like put one of you on a spot. I thought maybe you guys would fight over the response. I think it's a good point. And compared to bank account, what we just talked about, bail-ins, our cash gets convert, converted to stock. That's illiquid. Compared to we hold capital in a life insurance company, we're guaranteed access to, to liquidity. How important is that? If If things really do go sideways, that impacts something like this on, on that large of a level, how important will it be to have liquidity? Super. And I would add to the fact that, you know, you talk about inflation being one of these major concerns in an inflationary environment, the insurance company actually does better, mm. right? Because they're able to, as interest rates rise, they were to buy bonds at a much higher rate and subsequently, those things last in the portfolio for we're like we're in other words, right now, we're still benefiting from the bond purchases and the portfolios of the companies that we work with that are 30 years old. So think about like right now, as those inflationary pressures come and, and start to increase those interest rates, that's just continuously going to start leveling out that portfolio going forward. And so what does that do? That increases dividends potentially. So again, these are, these are things that help us to know the safety of our cash, our cash value. All right, let's take it to the, the secondary level here. What are other areas in which our cash value or any asset for that matter be at risk? Well, I, I wanna ask Mark this. We were actually talking about other things that could be compared to, because I think sometimes when you have something that's unknown, like, it, like, let's say you've never implemented infinite banking, as we're talking about using life insurance policies to uh, finance all of life. And, and you don't know what we're talking about. When we're talking about whole life insurance, cash values, like all these things. The best way is to compare it to something that you do know. So Mark, like talk about it from the standpoint of like equity lines. People can use equity lines to run their life. You know, you've mentioned 
uh, velocity banking in the past on the show. Talk about that a little bit. If, if, if you were to be looking at utilizing the equity within your home and going in a home equity line of credit, that's based off of your current present value of your home. So whatever that number ends up being, you can then utilize that to do what you want to do. We have a lot of clients who equi- uh, equitize, uh, equitize. Utilize, yeah, utilize the equitized equity within their equitable home. Um, see how many times I can say that fast. Uh, and, and go out and do certain things, right? Find opportunities. Well, the unfortunate thing, though, is if there is a bubble, if there's a crash, if there's a pullback in, quote, home prices, well, now your percent ratio of what you could borrow has gone down. Right. If you had a hundred thousand dollar home, you had a seventy thousand dollar mortgage, you have thirty thousand dollars worth of equity. Let's say the HELOC is going to give you 90% LTV. Well, you can now take out a twenty thousand dollar home equity line of credit. So 20 grand plus 70 grand. Now you're at 90 grand. There's a 10% buffer. If that home comes down in price value, the bank has the right to call your HELOC and adjust it and adjust it downward to reduce their exposure. So now all of a sudden you're running out of liquidity. The, the ratio that was there, the original asset that's being leveraged against the value has changed. Whereas our cash value only moves in one direction and that's up. And that's because we've utilized a very important tactic called strategery in where we place our cash. <laughs> well, but Mark, what you're pointing out is from how safe is something it's not just the underlying asset and how the growth of that asset is uh, treated. It's also the safety of the system that we've created with it. Because I, I, I liken the, the velocity banking thing. Let's say, for instance, you are using velocity banking. That means you're pulling out money on a line of credit against your home. You're using it for your expenses. And then you're paying down that line of credit little time over a little time, you know, what am I trying to say? Over, over time. Over a time. Gosh, can't say, can't speak today. And, but then let's say to your point, the bank then limits your access to that one vehicle, that system that you are using to pay off debt and get, you know, completely run your whole financial system. Whose system is it? The safety of the system is at risk. Whereas, with a policy designed the way we're talking about in infinite banking, we continue to own the safety of the system. And, and that gives us longevity despite any market movement or concerns. So I think it's really valuable. I, I think what you're getting at is first right of refusal. Uh, when it comes to a life insurance contract, the very first person who's in line to be able to exercise a loan to utilize the leverage of that cash value is the actual policy holder. Whereas if we were to go and say, try and get a mortgage on a home, we are now asking for someone else to recognize that and then let us borrow their money. And so we have to be at their whim, at their rules, at their game. And you're going to slaughter a small forest as you fill out all that paperwork. But when it comes to a life insurance contract, there's only two questions you ever get asked when it's time to exercise a loan. How much and where do you want it sent? Which to that point, which I think is so incredible in the banking world, there is always, you know, essentially a bureaucrat standing between you and your money, right? Banks are so illiquid, so illiquid. And if you've ever had a significant amount of cash in the bank and you've ever tried to go withdraw a significant amount of cash from the bank in cash, the bank is always, <laughs> the bank is always going to ask questions. What, what do you need the money for? Right. Uh, well, we may not be able to get all of it for you today. We may have to. You may have to come back. It's. I mean, it's happened to me before. I will tell you. Anytime I have ever submitted a request to have the insurance company give me cash, that's never happened. Ever. They just EFT the money directly into my bank account. It's the greatest thing ever. There is never a bureaucrat standing between me and my money. Whenever I control the banking system in my life. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Like, I think this leads into our third point here. And that has to do with what are some other potential threats against your money? Creditors, in your case, you're talking bureaucrats, um, I would say legislation, like those are things that have to be considered when you're, con- when you're thinking about where to park cash. Um, 
what are some, how does this compare, let's say, to, to some of those things? And, and how, does, how does this pre- prevent you from having those things taken? This is important because we're not just talking about where we keep some cash, mm-hmm. right? We talk about a bank account. Who keeps lots of money in a bank account? Who's got large amounts of cash anywhere? Exactly. Nose, nose goes. No, none of us. So what we're talking about is, is where do we build the foundation? Where do we want to store everything? And, and so I think it's just helpful from a frame of reference. If we're going to find somewhere where we're comfortable, not just divvying things up in a whole bunch of different places, but this is going to be home base for the family, for the business, for future generations, it's going to need to be safe. And so we would want to pick the place that's got the least amount of threats to it. And there's, there's a bunch of different types which I think we're about to discuss, but I think it's worth framing. Go ahead, JD. Large father. I actually love it, Ernie, when you call me large father. Um, well, no, what I was going to, to say was uh, any, any amount of money that you have sitting in cash, particularly as, a, as an investor, I, so I'm, an, I, I'm a real estate investor, so we always need access to cash. If I ever get sued, which pray to God that actually never happens. But if I ever get sued, any dollar that I have sitting in a checking account is up for grabs from any creditor. But because I live in a wonderful immediately. state, immediately. You, you can't take it out after. Once Correct. that lawsuit is there, any transaction that happen, happens after would be considered like trying to flee or trying to defraud, right? It's, it's Which frozen. could be then called back. That's right. It's frozen. And and so for, for us, that because every dollar, I live in an amazing state, uh, Texas, uh, for those of y'all that aren't familiar, it's the greatest country in, in the country. Um, <laughs> I you, love you know, South America. Been there many <laughs> times. It, it's, it's fully and totally creditor protected. Like free from bankruptcy, free from creditors, it is impenetrable. And, and that gives us an amazing amount of comfort knowing that if we were to ever get sued, our business operations may not necessarily have to stop entirely. Right. Like that's, that's a really, really comforting thing to know that our cash is not at risk like that. Did you know this too, JD? And I, I, I was told this by an attorney. So if it's incorrect, hold him and um, liable, not me for this. But as we borrow money against our life insurance policies, right. To go do many different things, investment opportunities, buy real estate, buy businesses. And we have loans outstanding against the insurance company. And let's say one of those businesses were to get sued outside of that. Did you know that money that's in that business could be used to pay back the loan against the insurance policy? And that loan, that lien would predate any lien put upon that business due to that lawsuit. I, I, this is music to my ears. No, I did not know that. That, that even puts more walls and, and protections around what we're doing. That is amazing. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to, I want to talk about, this is a common question that people have asked is what if the government changes the rules mm. on cash value going forward? Like let's say they come out and say, Hey, it's no longer tax free. What, what do you guys say to that Mark? Like h- how does that, how does that uh, give you any sort of safety? Well, if, if they do change that, I'd like to know why all the rich people let that happen. <laughs> why did the, how did the Rockefeller family allow that one to slip through the, uh, the cracks? Because, um, and, and actually even furthermore, how did the banks allow that to happen? Because if we actually take a look at the people that are utilizing this as a place to store cash, Rockefellers, a lot of very well-connected, high, highfalutin, influential people. Banks have a ton of cash value life insurance. Uh, take it to the tune of billions. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, who works for uh, Michigan, he has a life insurance as part of his uh, compensation package. So there are a lot of things that happen to happen. And actually, life insurance, because it predates the tax code, it's going to be a little bit harder to start throwing some rules in that direction when there's a lot of other easier ways for them to get it. Well, I, I mean, no higher power right now in the United States than what office? President. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Well, um, and, 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 you know, 
Joe Biden reported uh, disclosing, you know, his his financial assets in 2020, revealing one of the assets in which he owns was the whole life policy. Come on. Dun, dun, dun. Amen. Well, I'm just saying, like, Congress, I mean, every every Fortune 500 company out there, every bank that you just alluded to, Mark, all, all the wealthy, this is a place where they're all storing assets. They're not going to allow it to come back and get them. Now, they there may be rule changes, right? But what happens to all of those people who had it before, usually? They're grandfathered. They get grandfathered in. There's a reason why you know, that those people in Congress and uh, political positions are so old. Most of them are grandfathers, right? I think that's what they call it, the grandfather rule. <laughs> Was that uh, your thing, that- so, Joe? <laughs> oh, there it is. That's good. Man, My bad, Joe. He's on me. Yeah, well, I, I think if if because uh, all of y'all know, uh, you know Nancy Pelosi and, and her her stock trades that she's been making lately, and she's, um, so smart. she's been absolutely brilliant. I mean, just Sage. killing Sage. These, these these stock market gains. <laughs> and I would suspect if if she was actually coherent and could qualify for life insurance, I bet she would be cramming tons of capital right now uh, into uh, into life insurance policies. Well, and the other part, I just want to compare this to okay. If somebody were to make a change to anything to get access to capital, life insurance would be one of the last places to do it because it's a contract that would have to change. Like contract law would have to change in order to have any sort of adjustment to that. Whereas compare that to something that was designed by the IRS code, i.e. 401k, IRAs, any of the alphabet soup that you want to put in there can easily be adjusted with one stroke of a pen today. And it can affect accounts that have been building for 30, 40, 50 years. Like, think about that for a second. I've been building an asset, i.e. a 401k or IRA for years and years and years and years. I'm assuming that it's being handled a certain way per the tax code at the time of my contribution and they can change the rule and it affects the money that has been building in that account the entire time. Compare that to my life insurance contract. If they go and make changes to life insurance in general and say, I will, no longer is it tax-free, it would be, it would be almost impossible for them to go and make them retroactive because of changing actual contract law. It would likely be something from this point forward. So my, my point to you is, what are you waiting for? Right? You know what the law is, the contract law is today. Put your funds in the right place so that they're safe today. Man, this, this has gone deep. And for the IBC nerds listening, I know that this has been fun. If this is the first exposure you've had to this discussion and you want to know how can I like figure out if this is something I should be doing, should my cash be stored in a place that you are saying is as safe as this dividend paying whole life insurance, this infinite banking concept, then go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash free call. One of these coaches are happy to walk you through a process that helps you discern if it's the right fit for you, should you be implementing this foundational tool to help you become financially free? Because at the end of the day, we're, we need to understand where we are in that journey. And for many different people, they're trying to get to a different spot. And this might be the tool that either is the, the, the springboard or just the thing that enhances everything else they're doing. So grateful to, to have you on today. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a lot of fun. If you weren't watching this live, you didn't realize that we were renaming each other as we were going and uh, making fun at each other. But the the purpose of this group is to become financially free, get there as fast as possible and have fun while we do it. So thank you coaches for being on this call. Thank you for listening to this episode. Have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.